European powers urge Iran regime to end breaches of nuclear deal. France, Britain and Germany, the European parties to the 2015 Iran nuclear deal, on Friday expressed deep concern at Tehran's violation of the deal and urged it to cooperate with the UN nuclear watchdog. The European powers said in their first joint statement since an IAEA briefing earlier this week. The International Atomic Energy Agency confirmed in its report of September 8 that advanced centrifuges had been installed or were being installed in Natanz. We are deeply concerned by these activities. We continue to support the JCPOA nuclear accord and urge Iran to reverse its activities that violate its JCPOA commitments and to refrain from all further action. We call on Iran to cooperate with the IAEA on all relevant matters. Iranian regime's pension funds on brink of collapse amid U.S. maximum pressure campaign. Crippling sanctions imposed by the United States on Iran's regime since President Trump withdrawal from the nuclear deal last year have left its pension funds on the brink of collapse, according to documents reviewed by National Security Council officials and obtained by Fox News. U.S. officials are pointing to this as evidence of just how punishing the ongoing maximum pressure campaign against Iran's regime has been. Secretary of State Mark Pompeo told Fox News, They have fewer resources. We can see it with the Shia militias in Iraq. They are scrambling for resources. We think the Iranian government will shrink, that their GDP will shrink by as much as 12 or 14 percent this year. This will reduce their capacity to purchase the things they need, the equipment they need, the materials they need to inflict terror around the world. The impact has been so severe that of, eight, of the 18 existing retirement funds in Iran, 17 are in the red, according to those documents. That includes the pension funds for all of the Iranian regime's armed forces. There are also signs of growing crisis in Iran's real estate market. The documents refer to the interconnected challenges as a house of cards. Canada sells Iran regime's properties to compensate victims of terror. Some $21 million of the Iranian regime's property has been sold in Canada after authorities ordered it be seized to compensate victims of attacks backed by Tehran. On 7 August, the Superior Court of Justice in Ontario ruled that funds from the $21.1 million asset sale should be distributed to victims of Hamas and Hezbollah attacks. The two groups are said to be backed by Iran's regime, making Tehran a state sponsor of terrorism. One of two properties sold was the former Iranian cultural center in Ottawa which raised a staggering $20 million. In addition to the proceeds of the sale of the properties, the victims were awarded a share of some $2 million seized from the Iranian regime's bank accounts. Samantha Power says Iran deal backwards went soft on human rights. Samantha Power, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations in President Barack Obama's second term, has said supporters of the 2015 Iran nuclear deal went soft on the regime's human rights abuses. Ambassador Power recalls in her new memoir, Unfortunately, some countries were so pleased by the nuclear agreement that they felt it was unnecessary to run an annual U.N. General Assembly resolution condemning Iran's human rights abuses. Ambassador Power doesn't identify the countries that want to scrap the tra traditional denunciation in the month after the Security Council's July 2015 endorsement of the nuclear agreement. But the episode dovetails with long-standing criticism from Iran hawks, who argued that the agreement short-circuited Western efforts to counteract Tehran's other aggressive policies in order to avoid provoking the Iranian regime to leave the deal. I insisted we proceed, lobbying frenetically to ensure that the Iranian government's deplorable treatment of its people got attention in its own right, power rights in the education of an idealist. Such successes were all too rare, according to the leading opponents of the agreement, who maintained that the deal gave Iran's regime the money to finance a multinational terrorism campaign while tying the hands of the United States and Western European powers.